Okay, well now I have some lovely softened buckskins that are ready for smoking. So I have several here to smoke and what I'm gonna do is look at them and see which are the nicest match in terms of size for smoking. So there's often a little bit of a, of a crunchy bit towards the very, very edge of the hide and I'm gonna just go ahead and nip that off and then also take off any little jagged bits that wouldn't glue into a bag very well. Okay, I've got the edges all trimmed up on this beautiful hide and it's time to attach the two hides together. The idea is that we want to make a bag as sealed as possible so that we can fill it with smoke and the smoke has to actually pass through the hide in order to get out. So that's how we're gonna assure that the inside of the hide gets well smoked. You sometimes hear people talk about tacking hides to a smokehouse in order to smoke them and just like filling the inside of the smokehouse and then turning them around to do the inside. The problem with that is that the smoke is really just getting to the surface of the hide. It's not having to pass through the hide in order to get out. So to my mind, that is nowhere near as thorough a job smoking and that's a hide that could potentially get stiff on you when it gets wet or over time as the middle of the hide isn't well smoked and potentially there's still intact glues in there. So I'm going to line them up so that their tails, or where their tail was, if they don't have tails, line up. And so they're both lined up, spine to spine, rumps up and necks down. And that's where we're gonna attach the smoking skirt to act as a funnel. So we're gonna take a loop, and I like to make a loop out of the cutoff ends, especially around the bottom of the neck. So I'm going to start up by the tail of the hide and I'm going to get my loop in here and sew that in. And then I'm going to start from that spot going around towards the legs. I'm going to do that to both sides and then work around the hide. So rather than just starting up at the tail and going all the way around the hide, on one side and then do the other. I'm gonna go down a little bit on each side as I go so that I make sure that it's totally lined up. I don't wanna to get to the bottom and then realize that it's all been pulled wonky. I wanna adjust as I go. Okay. Okay, got my loop sewn in. I can tuck away my needle. You'll notice that I use a pair of hot pink scissors for my buckskin so that they're really easy to keep track of. And I used to always try to keep track of my tools by putting a little piece of buckskin on them, but then I also sell tools and I would find that a lot of my students would also like mark their tools so they could find them easily by putting on a piece of buckskin. So I realized that that wasn't a way to keep track of it. I needed to do something that no one showing up to my classes was likely to have. So now my signature mark is a little piece of hot pink zebra stripe duct tape. That is my signature. So don't take that. I am hot pink zebra stripe. And then I use just Elmer's glue. You know, I've tried other types of glues and like clear Elmer's, but just the straight up white Elmer's glue seems to be by far the best way to go about things. So, and then I just put a little dab of glue just along the very, very top of the hide. And then go ahead and put the pieces together. And it can be helpful to have some little clips to hold this as it dries. But I often don't bother with that. I just kind of pinch it together a little bit with my hands until I feel like I've got a good seal and then I carry on.
about five or six inches at a time and I'm using a really really thin line of glue at the top because anywhere that it's glued is an area that it's not going to be taking smoke so it's going to be a white spot on the finished hide and it's possible that area is going to get stiff so I usually end up just cutting off my glued edges uh, and so I want to have them be as thin as possible to hold it together so I'm not losing any more hide than I need to. So even when you come to little weird wobbly edges like this, just keep the edges totally together the whole time and it's gonna make some kind of like funky 3D areas on the hide, but that's okay because those just help hold the bag out so that it can fill with smoke better, which is what we want. So now I have two hides nicely put together into a hide bag. So I'm gonna just kind of Give it the once over and make sure that I don't have any little spots that need a little extra attention. Make sure I've got staples every so often to keep it from unfurling. And now it's time to attach the smoking skirt. So the smoking skirt I like to make out of canvas ideally. And this one is kind of large. It's used for an elk hide generally. So I'm going to just make it a little bit smaller up top with a couple staples. Now it'll fit my deer hides nicely. If I was sewing I would use the running stitch but for time's sake I'm going to do a combination of glue and staples today. Okay and here we have a finished hide bag attached to a smoking skirt ready to go onto the smoker. So what I need now is something to smoke them with and my preference is rotten punky wood. So we call chunky rotten wood that's kind of broken down punk and I'm gonna build a fire let it burn down to coals and then put the punk on top of the fire to create smoke but not flame because flames of course would burn up my hides. So I'm gonna head into the woods with my pack basket and my hatchet and look for just the right type of punky wood. Not any punk will do. So this is the perfect spot because it shows me exactly the kind of punk that I want, which you can see is nice and dark colored. And when I break it apart with my hands, it breaks super easily and it breaks, it breaks in these nice square chunks. So that's exactly what I want for smoking my hide because the fact that it's breaking apart into chunks means that the cellulose has been broken down. That's the part that's flammable and could potentially catch my hide on fire. So really important that I get this blocky, chunky type of punk. Right here next to it is a piece, and this might be a different tree. I'm guessing that the nice punk is the dug fir, and often the grand fir looks a little bit different. There's a Swainson's thrush that just flew in and landed and is looking at me. It might be a hermit thrush. It is all by itself in the woods, so maybe it's a hermit thrush. It's a little bit smaller. Yeah, I think it's probably a hermit and not a Swainson's thrush. I'd have to hear the call to be totally sure at this point. At any rate, this is an example of what I don't want. And this is probably grand fir, um, but it might be dug fir that's been broken down by a different type of fungus. So see how it's long and light in color. And when I break it apart, I get these long bits rather than the chunky bits. You can see it's very fibrous in nature. That's the cellulose still intact. And this stuff is going to be very flammable. So we'll smoke for a while and then it'd be likely to catch fire on me, risking me burning up my hides. So none of this stuff and lots of this stuff is what I'm after. And usually I figure kind of three like basketball sized handfuls of punk to smoke each hide.
So if I have two hides together, then it's usually not quite as much as double that amount, but I like to have more than I need just in case. So I'm gonna harvest a bunch of punk and haul it up the hill and let's get these hides smoking. I bring my hatchet because sometimes it's helpful to have that to break it up, but this one is perfect and easy to use with just my hands. All right, so I have this beautiful hide bag attached to the smoking skirt and a tripod set up with a hole underneath it. And I'm going to uh, build a fire in the hole, let it burn down to coals, and then throw some of the punky wood that I harvested in the forest onto that. And once it's smoldering, I'm going to put the smoking skirt around the hole to funnel the smoke up into the hide bag. So let's go ahead and get this attached to the tripod. So I've got a rope dangling from the tripod and a nice stick. So the stick goes through the loop and then tied to the tripod. And then as you can see, the bag just kind of dangles from just that top tie. So I'm gonna attach it on both sides so that it can hang evenly and be held open nicely by the stick. So I've got needle and thread here. Okay, so that should be good. So I'll get my propping sticks and then I'll get some little bits of moss or you can also use toilet paper or something to fill any holes that haven't been sewn up. Or you can use clips or staple it or sew those together quickly, whatever works. There we go. Nicely propped open. So that ought to be just about right. All right, so I've got a nice fire going and it has just about burned down to coal. So it's about time to add my punk and let it get caught. I'm gonna stir it up a little bit. It's good to make sure that you don't have any uncharred sticks down in there because you don't want them to catch fire once you start smoking your hide. So I'm gonna let those ends cook. I like to break the punk up so it's about about this size, about the size of like a walnut in the shell or maybe half of my fist. So it depends on the size of your fist, right? So about uh, maybe like a quarter cup or something. Not really critical. And then once those are smoking pretty good, enough to make it pretty uncomfortable to be sitting here, then it's time to put the smoking skirt around. So I'm gonna get the skirt all the way around the hole, and then I'm gonna use some of the dirt that came out of the hole to attach the bottom, to kind of weigh down the bottom of the skirt to make sure that there's no air that's gonna get in there. Because what I want is for this to slowly smolder, and if it gets enough oxygen, then it could burst into flame even with the rotten punk. I'm gonna leave it open on one side so that it can put more punk in that way. Okay, so it's smoking pretty good. You can see smoke getting out through these holes here. So I'm gonna grab some clips or a stapler and clip that together so that I don't lose my smoke there. But it's nice to have one hole stay open so I can use it as a window to see the color on the inside of the bag once it's been smoking for a while. And now it's just a matter of monitoring it and when it stops smoking so profusely, that means that that punk has just about given all it has. So it's time to add the next round of punk. And that's gonna be usually about this amount, but I'm gonna break this up into pieces. So kind of a good double handful. And my rule of thumb is three or four good sized double handfuls should be enough for two medium sized hides. More of course for bigger hides and less for smaller. So to check, I'm just gonna 
go like that so I can see the color of the hide through this hole. One of the things that I'm looking for to know when the hide is well smoked and it's time to turn it around is for what we call show through. So the color of the smoke begins to show through the thinner parts of the hides, usually starting with the bellies and the armpits first and then up around the tail and then eventually closer and closer into the spine. So we're already getting some nice show through in the belly and up towards the top of the hide bag, and that's a great sign. Okay. So here is the back side, and you can see where there's some nice brown color, and here's the side that we were looking at, and again, you can see that nice brown color showing through in the thin areas. Okay, and here's where you can see the color showing through. So nice golden brown color, that is what we are after. And here is beautiful hide. This is a lovely golden brown buckskin color, just as we were after, and looks really nice and even. So a great smoking job. So now it's time to put it back on the tripod and do the inside. All right, so I've got it nicely hanging again and we'll be doing the same process on the inside. I'll be checking that little window and then when the color of the inside matches the color of the outside, then I'm gonna call it done. And we'll get the next set of hides on here. Okay, it's looking great. The moment has arrived. I am calling this hide done. So let's look at why. So this is where I'm checking the state of the hide. Right. Okay, so let's go ahead and take this off of the tripod and open them up. So it was a lot of hard work, but there is no way to get an amazing substance like this with any other process. Brain tanning is so unique and the finished product is so amazing. It is worth all of the effort. The pants I'm wearing right now are pants that I made about 15 years ago and then that I wore on an Arctic adventure. Uh, just this last fall and still going strong. So over 15 years and counting in these pants I'm wearing right here. So yes, it's a very labor intensive process, but it is so worth the effort. So good luck. I hope that you get excited about brain tanning and want to dive into this adventure on your own. you know you've reached the very pinnacle of luxury and hide tanning success when after three days hard work tanning and filming you get to lie down on your brand new six hide freshly smoked buckskin mattress. <sighs>